Hi there everyone. Sorry it's been it's been nearly a month since my last video but I've been busy recording and I've now got a fair backlog of videos that are three quarters filmed. The subject of this video is this fella which many of you will recognize at least from here onwards as a Brocock Ranger XR. What I've done during the course of this review is add a compact Viroc XLK moderator to fit it in the rucksack without having to fold it. And I've added a wrap stock, which you'll see more about in the video. One thing is that folding this fella and the stock folds to the right hand side of the action. Folding this fella is easiest if you can get your hand over the back here of the action. And where the back of my wrist is, is where the back of a long scope would be. So be aware of that. I've wanted to review this fella for a long time because it's so compact and being a folder and you know, you're about to, you'll see in the, later in the video, you know how I like to wear a, a belt around my neck when I've got a folded rifle slipped over it and then I can walk on the crutches, hands free, perfect for around the farms. Now we've got a limited capacity. At the end of the video, there's gonna be an appendix, which is a sped up version of a full chrono check. There is a power adjuster here, with three positions. That doesn't increase the shot count when you turn the power down. It's basically a power reducer, just like the air arms power uh, adjuster, and it blocks the transfer port. So you don't get a higher shot count at lower power levels, but I'll do the chrono check to be sure. We have a split dovetail rail, and during the testing, as you'll see, I didn't have a 70 millimeter uh, Picatinny to dovetail adapter spare. So when I've reviewed this first with the immersive optics 10 by 42, and then with my PARD DS3550 RF, I've used Picatinny to dovetail adapters, as you'll see. But we have a great compact rifle that's been improved, in my opinion, by me adding the other buttstock. And then shortly, as soon as I've got this video online, I'll get this rifle returned to Robert Pickering Guns and it'll go back on sale in his second hand selection. So 849, I think these, this is, uh, 177. Let's see how the review goes. My first time uh, reviewing and testing one of these cool immersive optic scopes. Very, very compact, zero eye relief, and you have to adjust the uh, reticle with the ribbed dial that you can see within the uh, eye cup there before you then pop the eye cup back on it's easier to adjust the uh, dial up to focus with the rubber eye cup off and this scope does come with a large rubber eye cup you can see here and it comes with a smaller one which i've decided not to use just to block as much light out as possible with the supplied in my picatinny rail mounts there's a short medium and a long one and this is the the medium with it not fitting the brocock ranger xr's dovetail rail i was going to use a pair of snapping dovetail adapters but because the first and last bolt if you like are flat bottomed only the middle one snaps into place so instead i'm going to use a slightly longer eagle vision cam Picatinny to dovetail adapter, which should be perfect. And although it's too long for the rail, it's not too long that it'll uh, poke me in the face when I've got the scope mounted. Whereas when I use my PARG DS3550 RF for a little spot of pest control, I've used small single slot dovetail to Picatinny adapters that sort of snap in to the Eagle Vision mounts I'm using. And I still have a Brucey bonus bracket on the side so I can uh, test some add-on IR while I'm at it. As you can see, the immersive optics 10 by 42 scope does overhang the back of the action a fair bit, but this can't be avoided as bo both magazines stand proud of the, the Ranger XR action. So you can't span the magazine port with a solid rail. This particular range R is on loan courtesy of Rob at Pickering Guns. Perfect, thank you very much Rob. One thing is being pre-loved, shall we say, 
there's a fair bit of slack where the hinge connects to the back of the action. So once extended, there's a little bit of slack between the stock and the AR style buffer tube. And also, yeah, there's some definite slack where the hinge attaches to the back of the Ranger XR. But I can't see any way to take up that slack at the rear. There's no obvious uh, nut I can tighten up. Okay, wanting to tighten up this fella, and I've seen from online and th through these slots, there's two action screws on the underside of the action tube that are loose. So I've loosened one, two, three, four screws. This whole pistol grip and lower Picatinny rail piece is now loose and I've got to lift that off and not lose a little spring that might be underneath. So here's the little tiny spring that I don't think we're supposed to lose. A sticker here, warranty void if removed, warning. And that's one of the two screws I would like to tighten up. So I'll see if I can tighten this other one. This Allen screw here was very loose. So I've just tightened it up. There's still movement in between the castle nut and AR tube and the hinge. And there's still movement, of course, between the tube of the buttstock cheek piece and the buffer tube. So for my honest review here, with the Brocock Ranger XR, Rob at Pickering Guns supplied it with what I assume is a daystate moderator. It's a dovetail rail and the immersive optics 10 by 42 scope includes a medium adjustable MOA mount plus a long one and a short one. So the supplied kit covers all your scope mounting options. And then we've got an image of the, the scope with the three different adapters fitted, all of which have adjustable MOA, as you can see here. First off, I took the Ranger XR and the Immersive Optics 10x42 to the range and uh, I fitted it. It's a little bit on the long side, but I fitted it via an Eagle Vision Cam 150mm Picatinny to dovetail adapter and uh, it did the trick, but let me just show you how Bri gets on with it. So yeah, I can see that the bottom of the biathlon cocking lever is touching the uh, top of your hand. Still shooting anyway, so I don't know if you. That, that's the no, last. That sounded differently. Yeah, that's, uh, that's you out. Yeah, well, uh, I think that's uh, the smoothest, quietest oh. shotgun I've ever fired in my life. Oh dear, they're all over the place, are they're they? They're absolutely all over the place. They're moving, they're all on the card, I think. Say again? Triggers moderately horrible. Yeah, that's the problem. 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 That is just stupid and irritating. And I'm not keen on the scope either. The scope's a marmite job because it's a little zero eye relief. Yeah. Mm. Mm. The jury is definitely out on this one. Right, okay, well I'll be doing more testing but... I'm not encouraged by it. I'm going to have to do a lot of practice at the farm to reevaluate this one. Yeah, I think so. Um, I'm underwhelmed. <laughs> Thanks, Bri. Yeah, you're welcome. So, as you saw, not everybody's suited to these uh, zero eye relief scopes, and that includes me. So, after Bri found he had a bit of a, a wild uh, group at 25 yards indoors, I tried it and had a similar result. So, then I popped the PARD DS3550 on it and got it zeroed but I wasn't really that happy with the downrange group at 25 yards. It was tight enough but had several flyers. Then I went down to the farm a couple of days later to do a better check at 30 meters. Just about to do a 30 meter zero check. I've had a look around with 
the Height Micro Griffin Spotter GH35L and as expected there were no pests in here. I, I did find a few nests that weren't here last time I was here so it could be there's a bit of activity but this being the height of summer kind of late June the pests are all out being pests and eating all the crops but I'll be a lot more active here once we get to uh, harvest time. But anyway let's just show you the kit. I've just topped up the Mark II 13 shot mag with 8.44 grain JSBs. Click that over and shut, nice and positive magnetic rear gate. I've got the PAR DS3550 on board. I did swap out the moderator for a shorter Viroc XL just to save a little bit of space in the gun slip because I've actually fitted the wraps stock from Fab Defense. I've got that set for the right length of pull here with a nice grippy rear butt pad and the right cheek height to match the DS35 help things fit in the gun slip without having to fold it. The initial part of the hinge is nice and tight now that I've tightened up the loose screw underneath the action but there's still a little bit of looseness within the hinge itself. Okay although the wrap stock looks quite short here it's quite far up the buffer tube I've just checked it against my arm and the length of pull from the heel of the stock to the trigger is spot on for me and I'll put the measurement here for you. There is a little bit of movement. If I can show you this, if I hold the rear of the stock and move it slightly, I don't know if you can see that movement. So that's movement in the hinge and not movement in the stock itself because I've basically, I've moved this forward to where I want it. I've locked it off with the Allen key supplied. I've then fine tuned the cheek height for the DS3550 and the length of pull, both with this dual action lever here, which is brilliant. Any slack is within the hinge here and not between the wrap stock and the buffer tube or between the hinge and the action because I've tightened up the one of the two rear screws here. Okay, but that I think that looks a cracking piece of kit, perfectly at home on the Ranger XR. One very nice combo. Okay, let's get zeroed. My zeroing target is 29, 30 meters away there. And uh, I've got a shoot and see target on it, just so uh, I can make the shots nice and clear. Because this is the lower mag of the two DS35s. This is the DS3550 RF, which is four mag and eight mag. And I, because it's daylight and it's bright, I've got the lens cap closed, but I've got the seven mil aperture open and that's soaking up more than enough light to here with uh, daylight coming through these opaque roof panels. That's the range here. There we go, it's about 29, 30 meters, just funneling up exactly what I got with the Griffin GH35L thermal spotter. As you'll just have seen, the 30 meter group had a few flyers. Then I thought, what if it's the JSBs it doesn't like? Or maybe I've got a dodgy batch of JSBs. That was with my usual 8.44 grain, 4.52 millimeter JSBs. So then I tried a tin of HN Field Target Trophy, 8.64 grain. And thanks again to the guys at Edgar Brothers for those pellets. And that was as part of my review of the XV2 rifle a month or so ago. Nice six shot group, another one in to make it six. Yep, that's pretty satisfying at 30 meters. That's a seven shot group, much tighter. One perhaps flyer, you could say, but the whole seven shots almost covered by a pound coin at 30 meters. Much happier with that. Hi there, everyone. So, this is my end of my review of the uh, Brocock Ranger XR. Thanks very much to Rob at Pickering Guns in uh, just north of Yorkshire, North York, sorry, for the loan of this fella. Basically, we've got an eight slot Picatinny rail here for bipod 
for bench rest and zeroing and such like and for shooting prone if you can do that sort of thing I can't and we've got a split dovetail with a 13 shot or 10 shot magazine depending on whether you use the new one or the old one both work fine and as you can see I've got the stock folded so I can wear the rifle like this hands free because I can't wear a slung rifle over my shoulder because it just falls down so what I've done it's a bit of a balancing act between having a comfortable short uh, sling around your neck to have the rifle well above the knees so you, the moderator doesn't bang you up against your knees it's a, a sort of a toss up between that and having um, a long enough loop of belt that you can then lift it off without too much trouble and then as I'm sure you all know you basically press down on the hinge things open out click and that's it locked so that's in a compact rifle you've got your side lever and on the range on Wednesday we did find that Bry and one of the shooter found that while they were shooting the bottom of the drop down biathlon lever kind of clashed with the hands a bit um, as you can see it's close but it's not touching my hand there um, so that's a bit of a personal personal preference issue um, I'll be I'll be chronoing this rifle this afternoon on all three power levels but on full power you've basically got 30 shots out of one fill of air and you've got your manometer there is runs from about 90 bar green to, to about 200 for 30 shots positive safety press in from the left and trigger is locked and from the right in with a soft click and that's the trigger able to move and as you can see this is the piece de resistance for this review because this rifle has been out a fair while it's been reviewed a few times but I've added a wraps stock I'll put the info down below as to where I got this fella but for 205 quid it cost me and all I had to do was remove the existing black plastic telescopic stock and then pull down on this sprung lever pull it down a bit further than usual and the stock fits over the AR style buffer tube and then you've got length of pull adjustment but you've also got within the wrap stock itself you've got a further length of pull adjustment here and you've got a cheap piece adjustment I think it's got about 40 mil of adjustment so there'll be a link down below to uh, where you can get one of these fellas and once I've returned this rifle post review to Rob at Pickering Guns I'm going to pop this on my CZ455 17 HMR uh, for pest control um, because that, that's a, a cracking fibre input enforced polymer uh, heavyweight is about half a kilo just fully adjustable shoulder stock it's so got length of pull adjustment cheap piece adjustment and we've also got a slide off cover here under which there's a short Picatinny rail for monopods for doing, for doing bench rest so yeah cracking rifle and uh, I've did some zero a zero check earlier on up to 30 meters I think I've either got a duff batch of JSBs or this fella simply prefers H&N field target trophy in 8.64 grains because I got a group of 30 meters about the size of my thumbnail about the size of a pound coin which is fine because this is a second-hand rifle this is not brand new off the production line as soon as I return this to Robert Pickering guns this is going to be back on sale in a few days cracking rifle about 30 full power shots and uh, pretty consistent as well something else I've got I'm working on at the moment is a three-way thermal review so I have the excellent SH50 thermal scope this is a 384 by 288 and 12 micron on loan from the team at Hype Micro. Thanks again, everyone. This is currently on my MX Arms Crate 177. This is my go-to pest control rifle for sub-12 work. Excellent thermal scope. It's got video recording with audio. It does it all. But I also have the slightly more mobile with a net yet lanyard, Griffin GH35L, which if I hold it up, you can see this protuberance here is the laser rangefinder, and you've got a conventional digital camera underneath the thermal lens so that's my day-to-day uh, -day thermal spotter for basically any pest control duties and thermal spotters are, are invaluable that's a great piece of kit and if you're after small thermal it doesn't get much smaller than that and then how's about that for a thermal camera 
and literally this little block here that's the Explorer E20 from Hype Micro, which I've also got on loan for review. So basically via the Hype Micro Smart Vision app, it turns any smartphone into a thermal camera and recorder and you can see the results of a, a cold pair of glasses. You've also got down here, I'm holding it upside down right now if you like, but you've also in here got a color picture in picture visible camera. I'm already giving my feedback to the team at Hype Micro. There's a, a few, a few quibbles at the moment like I'd love this to allow audio recording through the smartphone to accompany the videos because at the moment the videos are mute but I think they're going to be working on that right now on the firmware firmware update brilliant piece of kit you can see how well it works this is a video coming very soon three-way comparison between a thermal scope thermal spotter with laser rangefinder and a thermal smartphone add-on all coming as soon as I can so thanks again to Rob at Pickering Guns for the loan of the Ranger XR and uh, before I return it I'll pop the original stock back on which as you can see here has just the sprung catch to adjust its position on the buffer tube and it doesn't have the same range of adjustments as the wrap stock. This is one tidy upgrade if you have a rifle with an AR style buffer tube with or without a hinge. So coming soon, I'll dismount the wrap stock. I'll then add it to the rear end, the buffer tube on my MDT LSS 22 stock on my CZ455 17HMR. And I'll bring you a video using that stock to fine tune the zero on the Discovery 5 to 25 by 56 first focal plane scope. Coming soon. Thanks very much. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to order your tickets for the shooting show in February. See you there. Cheers. Chrono check with 8.44 grain JSB exacts, 4.52 millimeters, and the Ranger XR is on exactly 200 bar on full power. Second magazine. Third magazine. Okay, I'm going to stop there as it's dropped below 11 foot pounds and we'll get the stats. 11.3 foot pounds. 775 is very healthy when the legal limit with these pellets is 799. 758, 787. A spread of 29 and a standard deviation of 7. Okay, so I'll repeat this exercise with the rifle on medium power. Okay, so I've turned the power down to uh, medium, that's on one notch down from full. Starting again. OK, 
Okay, that's 13 shots. Okay, magazine two, still on medium power. Okay, start of magazine three. Okay, I'll stop there because we've reached 10 foot pounds. 33 shots again, 10.6 foot pounds, 754 to 731, sorry, 731 to 761, spread of 30, uh, standard deviation of seven. Okay, another fill of exactly 200 bar, and this time the rifle is down on minimum power. Okay, pause in there. Start of magazine two. Okay, resumed. Start of magazine three. Okay, we're down to 7.5 foot pounds, so I'll call it a day there. But because of the lower power and averaging about eight point something foot pounds, you do get more like a full three mags worth, 39 shots out of this uh, power level. So 39, 8.1 foot pounds, 658, uh, 32 spread again, and seven standard deviation, very consistent across all three power levels.